Hello everyone, welcome back to the Strawberry Loli channel. I have another PR box full of new K-Beauty products that YesStyle was kind enough to send over. I think I have pretty much enough or like a good mix of stuff to do almost a full face. The only thing that they didn't send was any type of eyeshadow product. So I'll be using something, you know, in my collection for the eyeshadow. But yeah, everything else, let's just dive in and I'll give you my first impressions. So the first thing that they sent me was this Entropy Tough Brow Lift Perm Kit. So this is like that laminated brow trend that was popular last year, past two years. Okay, so it comes with three products within the kit. First one is the perm lotion, then we have the second step which is fixation liquid, and then just a regular brow brush. By the way, I'm well aware that I'm not the ideal model for this type of product, so to speak, since you know my brows are not really quite all there. I'm not all there myself. <laughs> It's kind of like missing on the ends and that is due to over plucking as a teenager The instructions on the box are in Korean So I'm going to read off of a website that has the English translation So it says step one, please remove any oil, dust, or makeup residues on your brow So I have a clean face For sensitive skin types, please use any type of lip balm or Vaseline around the brow area in order to avoid irritation around the brow area does that mean like like what does that mean so not on the brows right where i would have to apply the the entropy serum i'm just gonna skip that step and hope for the best because i want to present as true of a representation as possible of the results okay so step three finally we get to the application first apply the perm lotion onto the brows evenly using the brush i didn't realize there's a pamphlet inside the box that does indeed have English instructions. So don't worry if you're looking into purchasing this product and you can't understand Korean, they do have English instructions. All right, so it definitely has that like rotten egg smell. So you use this wide curved part first to lay down the perming lotion. And then it says to brush through with the other side to make sure that each eyebrow hair is coated. So I am going to do my best to finesse the shape here. This is actually such an interesting product. Like, I'm actually so glad that YesStyle sent this to me because I saw it had really good reviews online. In the past, whenever I watched people like on social media with laminated brows, I only ever saw the DIY version, so to speak. Like, I've only seen people do it with a glue stick, an Elmer's glue stick, you know? So I actually was not aware that you could perm it for real. Okay, it has been seven minutes. And the next step says that we are now going to remove the first agent cleanly along the eyebrow texture with a soft makeup cotton pad or wet wipe. So I have my wet cotton pad with cold water. It doesn't specify, like, warm or cold water. And I'm just gonna wipe it clean. I'm assuming like wait until it dries a little bit before taking the second agent and applying it all over your eyebrows using the middle part of the brush, the wide side. After applying the second agent, brush it with the other side so that it's evenly applied between the eyebrows. This helps to fix the shape of the eyebrows you want. After about six minutes, cleanly remove the second agent along the eyebrow texture with a soft makeup cotton pad or wet wipe. Tip, please adjust the exposure time according to the amount of eyebrow, hair, and skin type. Since the eyebrow is fixed according to the texture of eyebrow, wipe it clean into the shape you want. Final step, use the enclosed screw brush to arrange the texture in the desired directions. Okay, right away, I love this effect. Now, whether or not it's going to be long lasting or not is still up to be determined, but it's crazy how like just this tiny little lift to your eyebrows can give the effect of a lift to your whole face. Like, why didn't I think of this sooner actually? Especially since I've been considering like a string face lift for a while now, but I don't know. I feel like this product came to me at just the right time. It's already giving me the overall facelift effect that I wanted, even with just the brows. Okay, so moving on, this is kind of hilarious, but YesStyle also sent me the Tear Tear Mask Fit Red Cushion in 21N Ivory. And it's just funny because I already have the exact same product, except 
in the glittery Christmas edition. So just this packaging is a special edition, but the product itself is exactly the same and in the same shade. Yeah, 21 and ivory. I'm not the biggest fan of this original red formula to be quite honest with you. I much prefer the crystal mesh cushion. It's probably because of like the super full coverage aspect, but I just find that it doesn't apply smoothly. I feel like it, what's the word? Not pilling, but like, I feel like it almost collects in my pores because the formula is so thick and heavy coverage that it collects into little bumps along my skin. Like if you zoom in close, I feel like you can see that the texture is not smooth, which I'm not really pleased with because I feel like my skin in its natural state is smoother. So why would I want, what benefit would it be for me to have my foundation not even match the natural smoothness of my skin. The coverage itself, like the the color and stuff is really even and good, I'll give it that. I would say it's a very camera friendly foundation, like you will look good in pictures if you use this foundation. But it, yeah, in real life, maybe it's just a little heavy for me. It's not all that what it's cracked up to be, like just because it went viral. I think more for the dinosaur egg shape than anything, but yeah, just because it went viral doesn't mean it's like the best foundation in the world. It just all depends at the end of the day on your preference, your skin type. But yeah, definitely like not the smoothest, not the best foundation I've ever used in my life. But I will say that the long lasting claim is also very true because I've left this on for quite a while in some instances. I don't think over 24 hours in my case, but pretty close to that, like when I've been on flights and stuff, and yes, it does last well, like it doesn't break down or crack as easily as maybe some other formulas. But yeah, overall, mm, 8 out of 10, maybe 7.5. Okay, just did my brows off camera, and I'm about to hop off again just to do a really quick eyeshadow situation because listen, I don't have time today. But I just want to comment that even with the brow powder on, like covering my eyebrow hairs, the perm still makes such a difference in my opinion. It's so subtle yet so visible. Don't I just look so much more awake this way? Okay, tell me if any of you feel the same way, but I feel like every time I come across one of these more like gimmicky or... I mean, I don't think a brow perm product is a gimmick necessarily if it does what it claims to do which is to lift and laminate your eyebrows in the direction that you want it to but yeah anytime I come across one of these newer more extra or out there type of makeup products I feel like a part of me is always kind of secretly hoping that it's not gonna work or it's not gonna make that big of a difference because if it's good like if it actually turns out to work really well and give a desired effect. It makes me annoyed AF that I went all this time without knowing about or having the benefits of this product in my life. And that's how I'm feeling right now with this Entropy Eyelash Perm thing. And this thing is not cheap either, like even though yes, I got it in PR and I'm thankful for that. You know, if I was just a regular consumer, this would be a gamble for me to purchase for sure if I didn't know whether or not it was going to work well. Which is why I do these videos, okay? To hopefully help you guys in some way make better informed makeup purchasing decisions. Okay, so this is the very basic neutral brown eye look that I was able to come up with. It's actually quite a strange mix of products, meaning I haven't touched some of these for a while considering how basic it turned out. But yeah, I'll throw up a picture during editing of all the products that I used if you're interested. But now let us move on to the next product, which is the Etude Lash Up Comb Mascara in 01 Black. I always cringe when they send me like mascaras and stuff, even this eyebrow lift serum, although I'm very glad they sent it to me, but again, I just feel like I don't have the most ideal brows or lashes or face really, since my face is really asymmetrical, to best showcase a lot of makeup products, and yet I'm still here baby, doing my thing. Okay, I'm probably going to end up putting on falsies just because that's my preference for my looks, but just for the sake of research, let's apply this onto my bare lashes first. Um, I don't really know why it says it's a comb mascara because to me, this is definitely not a comb. 
this is like a regular mascara brush it's kind of in between it's kind of like in between the size that you would expect for a typical western brand mascara wand and an asian brand that is like really thin and tiny and precise but yeah it's definitely workable the spikes are very very like thin and precise so they do get in between the individual lashes really well and this formula is quite thin in a good way because that means it's not prone to clumping unless you really like that clumpy look which i know some people do like can you even see my itty bitty bottom lashes on camera i feel like i cannot even see to be honest i mean i am part of the itty bitty lash committee that's why i wear falsies so it's really not the mascara's fault but um, I just feel like this formula does not do much for my lashes by way of lengthening. I still prefer my holy grail, my lash mascara from Opera. No mascara that has ever been sent to me in PR has been able to come even close. I'm just saying. That's why on my own, I've long given up, okay, purchasing any other mascara except for this one. I'll be right back after I pop on some falsies. Sorry, the lighting changed because I decided to just switch to my ring light since the sunlight is coming like from behind me almost okay so next i have a blush from touch my cheek is that no the brand name is milk touch and this is the touch my cheek blush in 01 pure apricot Ooh, no it did not just fall out like that all right so very cute packaging i'm not sure that this color is the best for my skin which by the way i was against it not against it but like i was resistant to the whole color theory match thing like you know the professional consultation where a professional will tell you whether you're like a cool summer or a warm winter they'll pick out the colors with the exact undertones that flatter your skin type or your skin tone the most i was resistant for a long time because like I'm sure there's some merit to it, but I also feel like it's kind of a fad. And even if I went to, let's say, a really reputable professional and I got my color match done and it happened to really, really like work well with my own personal coloring, I'm still the kind of person that I feel like I would just revert back eventually to wearing whatever I wanted anyway. Like, I don't want to be told that maybe some of my favorite colors actually clash with my skin tone or something. So. That's why I've been resistant to it for such a long time, but I don't know, maybe the programming is slowly getting to me because I feel like I'm getting paranoid. I'm getting paranoid, like do some of my makeup choices not actually flatter me that well? Um, so I say all that to say that, you know, this type of color, it's kind of ironic because I used to be such a coral girly when it came to my makeup. I was all about the corals and the terracottas. Well, terracotta, I do think like it's pretty safe for me because it's a deeper color i feel like i work well with warm tones but i like cool tones too i don't know it's hard but it needs to be like pigmented basically i think pigmentation is low-key what i'm after at the end of the day but anyway it's just funny because i used to almost default to coral even for my lip color as well whereas nowadays i'm more all about the pink 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 I don't know i'm just a little nervous because it's not even like a deep warm toned apricot it is very very pale very pastel the embossing is pretty cute if you see that it says touch your heart reminds me of those heart-shaped uh smarties candies that we used to pass out when we were little during valentine's day and the packaging too i just want to quickly mention it is the same as this blush that i have from a different brand peach c but this one is this is milk touch and this is peach c and it seems like the exact, almost the exact same packaging. Just FYI, in case anyone was curious, I love these flower nose blush brushes because they are so tapered. Well, not that much. I mean, it looks kind of round, but it's like small enough so that I can really pinpoint the area that I want to place my blush. Because, you know, blush placement is everything for determining like your face shape and whatnot. Or whether you want to look more lifted it's crazy okay i feel like that's cute i don't look sick which is what i was afraid of but um i'm just still personally i'm not in like an apricot mood lately i haven't been for several years low-key so it's interesting to be back in this space last but not least i was sent two new lippies so the first one is from 
Black Rouge. I've never heard of this brand before. It's the Half and Half Water Glow in the shade HG09 Fig Syrup. Ooh, that's what the component looks like. Very sleek and glossy. I actually have a nail appointment scheduled for today and I was thinking of making my nails pretty much this exact color of red. Like a jelly texture too. So we'll see how that turns out if my nail tech is really able to match the effect that I want. I'm not sure what happened for these next few clips. Like the audio completely just did not record. But yeah, basically I was saying how I like the formula because it's a little thicker, it's a little more viscous than I imagined. I thought it was going to be one of those super watery formulas like, you know, the Rom and lip tints which do nothing for me because I like to use lip products to kind of plump out and shape my lips to the perfect shape that I want. So yeah, and it also kind of reminds me of the Revlon Jelly Tint lip colors which I really love. The only two problems is that the smell is kind of strange to me. It's not bad but it's like vanilla with a sour tinge to it. Very strange and also it has kind of an unpleasant taste that seeps into your mouth when it's on your lips so that I was not the biggest fan of. So yeah that's the only thing. Beautiful finish though. It just doesn't match my eyes or my cheeks right now. Like wow. I'm not joking, like I do plan on bringing this in to my nail appointment now and telling her this, this is the exact color and finish that I want for my nails. Okay, I have one last lip product. Hopefully this will be a shade that matches the rest of my makeup better. Ooh, this one went viral a while back too. This is the Florte Special Edition Heart Shaped Lips in S06 Too Cool. Sorry, I was holding it upside down. So there's the box. It's covered in plastic wrap. Ooh, oh my god, this is so cute. There's a bunny on the packaging. I don't know if this is from a limited edition collection or what. <laughs> okay, it's cute, but I can see how some people might also think it's a little juvenile. Um, so indeed, it is in a heart shape. And this seems to be like another jelly red type of color. So I feel like I'm just out of luck today that my lip color is not going to match the rest of my face. It comes out when you click the bottom like this and then you just glide it on. Ooh, that is super glidey. Okay, don't push out too much like I did because that just melts like directly onto your lips. I feel like if it weren't contained in this tube lipstick format, the formula would barely be able to hold the shape. That's not a bad thing. It's just like... It's one of those formulas. Mm. Okay, that goes on like very semi-sheer, which I think doesn't look crazy. It matches better than the than the um, Black Rouge lip for this look. I can see why this one went viral because it's like super glossy, comfortable, easy to apply. And there's like micro glitters throughout. I don't know if the camera's picking up on it. Here, maybe if I swatch on my hand. Ooh, yeah, you have to be really careful. Only push once or twice to get the product out. You see the sparse glitter particles? Okay, I like this Flirte lip. I can see myself using this a lot. Let's do a quick recap on all of the products that we used today. Firstly, the Entropy Brow Tough Brow Lift Perm Set. This one genuinely, genuinely blew me away. Like, I'm speechless. It was advertised to me or I knew about it, I would be skeptical just because it looks like one of those gimmick products. But I feel like this is low-key, almost like a game changer type of product. Now, I don't know. Again, it claims to last for up to five to six weeks, the perm, if you do it correctly, following their instructions. We'll see about that. But even if it doesn't, even if it falls a little short, like three or four weeks, I still think that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good deal. It's a pretty good effect to have, to be able to do by yourself at home. Even more so than the, like, the lifting factor, which it does claim to do. But more so than that, I feel like the biggest way that this contributes to just an overall more polished look is the fact that it separates your brows and also straightens them. So even if let's say the perm falls down a little bit over the weeks, like your brow hairs don't point straight up necessarily the whole time, they're gonna be straight and separated, which just automatically looks 
cleaner and more put together in my opinion like it's subtle you would never be able to place your finger on it but if you place side by side someone who has used this brow perm and someone who hasn't like let's say i mean it depends on your hair texture of course but let's say in your natural state your hairs are a little more like all over the place they're going in different directions like some kinks to it this will set you straight okay i'm not even joking i'm genuinely floored by this product and i will definitely continue using it and the fact that i can use this kit several times yeah it's probably the standout of all the items i tried today for me next item oh the tier tier foundation like i have told you many times on this channel before i personally i'm just not the biggest fan of the red cushion foundation i just don't find it particularly flattering to my skin texture although it is high coverage and it has spf 40 and all of that i just feel like if you look closely at my skin after it's applied fully onto my face it just emphasizes my texture not even like it just makes my skin look worse i feel like my skin looked better without this foundation on i don't know it's not particularly moisturizing and yeah for me i prefer the crystal mesh foundation or even just straight up other brands have better foundations in my opinion next we have the etude lash up mascara which was underwhelming to sum up in a nutshell it really didn't do anything to my lashes um it doesn't clump up that's about the only merit but i didn't find it to be particularly lengthening or curling i mean even with my tiny lashes my favorite mascara is able to at least build upon those but this one the etude one it just didn't really do anything for me so it's a pass for me the milk touch touch my cheek blush the formula itself i think is very nice very finely milled and you can see there's a opaque coverage i'm just not the biggest fan of this shade although it makes sense they probably sent it to me because it was one of the less popular shades to begin with so give me this in a pink or a red and i would be a totally happy camper but yeah definitely not this jaundice orange that we've got going on here and then finally the lip products so i think you know by the fact that i'm already reapplying this one which one is my favorite the flirt flirte heart-shaped lips i really really enjoy the glideability and just the shininess the comfortability of the entire formula i swear it has like a slight mintiness to it I could be imagining things but definitely see myself using this frequently because it's just so like intuitive and easy to use you just click it and then it comes out so i can definitely see myself reapplying this a lot while i'm on the go the only thing is that again it is super super melty to the point that see it's already like melting into the cap but yeah the fact that it's so melty and glidey it means that you would go through it pretty quickly but i think these are quite affordable anyway like the whole brand florte it doesn't seem that expensive so that is a win in my book finally the black rouge half and half water glow although i do really love the finish and the texture of the formula like it's not too watery there is some you know viscosity to it i still it's the way that the taste seeped into my mouth that was kind of off-putting to me it doesn't taste pleasant and the smell is kind of weird to me so personally for me i would still reach for my revlon jelly tint lip colors any day over this one these have a more limited color range though that's the only thing like i wouldn't be able to find this shade in the jelly tint lips but yeah revlon has the marginally superior formula here in my opinion and it's also completely scentless and tasteless so there you have it that is my full face of new k beauty products that yes style was kind enough to send over i hope you found this helpful please do consider using my code berry gang if you are considering purchasing anything either i reviewed here or you're just making like your regular restocking purchase i would really appreciate it it does help my channel a lot and yeah i'll see you in the next one bye